this video, we're going to be discussing barbiturates and benzodiazepines. Now, if you guys don't know, we have a playlist on our YouTube channel right here where you can go and watch videos for the USMLE Step 1 specifically for psychiatry. So definitely go check that out. And while you're there, go ahead and uh, like, comment, and subscribe to our channel. It'll really give us some help and support. So with that being said, let's talk about barbiturates. Barbiturates are any class of sedative and sleep-inducing drugs that are derived from barbituric acid. Okay, and that's why we have this in the name right here, right? Barbit. Um, so an example of this would be phenobarbital or pentobarbital. Uh, any class of drugs that have the letters barbital or barbit are going to be classified as barbiturates. Now these are usually anti-seizure drugs that are used to treat epilepsy. And they activate the GABA receptors and are used as a way uh, to sedate patients and calm them down. Uh, now, these have largely been replaced by benzodiazepines. Barbiturates are kind of the old school cousin of benzos. Uh, but there's still uh, something you need to know for step one because you may be presented with barbiturate abuse when it comes to your classic USMLE step one vignettes. Now, barbiturates are also a seen as depressant we've already talked about one seen as depressant and that was alcohol barbiturates are also considered that and uh, that's simply it's simply because it has similar effects to alcohol there is a very narrow therapeutic index index in barbiturates so it's very easy to overdose and uh, it's very dangerous when taking with alcohol and that's what led to the death of Marilyn Monroe. She overdosed on barbiturates. She probably drank it with alcohol. Uh, so that's definitely a very dangerous, dangerous drug to deal with. And that's largely why we have replaced barbiturates with benzodiazepines. Now, when it comes to uh, barbiturates by themselves, we've already talked about how they are a sinus depressant. But when you overdose, the main issue that occurs is respiratory depression. You're not going to be breathing properly. And uh, since it's a CNS depressant, it's going to lead to respiratory depression. And there's no actual antidote for uh, barbiturate overdose, surprisingly. We're going to talk about uh, benzos and how there is an antidote for barbiturates. There is no antidote, which is kind of scary. So supportive care is the only treatment you can give and if a patient doesn't uh, recover from supportive care most likely they're not going to recover and they're going to pass away so heavy users in this case must be weaned off and without weaning a heavy user off an abrupt uh, uh, discontinuation of barbiturates can lead to withdrawal symptoms now this can lead to delirium hallucinations seizures as well as life-threatening cardiovascular collapse. The way I like to think about it is because barbiturates are so closely related to alcohol, a lot of the withdrawal symptoms are also going to be very closely related to alcohol, like the delirium, the hallucinations, the seizures. It's very closely related. And that's why you never take barbiturates or you never let a patient uh, drink alcohol when they're on barbiturates, if they even are on barbiturates. Uh, so just keep that in mind. So that is pretty much all you need to know for barbiturates barbiturates and how they're going to be presented. A lot of times what you might have is a vignette of a patient who presents to the clinic uh, very depressed when it comes to their autonomic and their CNS function. Uh, they might be delirious, they might be having seizures, or uh, they might be hallucinating uh, if they just started withdrawing. Or if they took it with alcohol, like I said, they're going to have a very deep depressed CNS system. They're not going to be waking up. They might even go into respiratory depression. So just keep that in mind. That's something you want to make sure you do not miss for step one. Now, the next class of drugs we're going to talk about when it comes to abuse, substance abuse, is going to be the benzodiazepines. Benzodiazepines. Now, these are a class of psychoact psychoactive drugs, and they're classified or they're characteristically uh, identified with their uh, suffix of uh, like the Z-E-P-A-M. So the Zepam is the suffix you need, you need to understand, okay? So lorazepam, oxazepam, diazepam, these are benzodiazepines. So the PAM 
or the Zapam is something you definitely need to be able to spot because if it give if it's given to you as an option, uh, you should know what the class of drug is that we're talking about. Now there are many medical uses for benzos, anxiety, alcohol withdrawal. They're used there. They've also replaced a lot of the barbiturates that be, that are being used or that were being used. So benzos are the new uh, barbiturates in a sense, and there is a greater safety margin than barbiturates. That's mainly why that we replaced them, right? And barbiturates is a very narrow therapeutic index, but benzos have a higher or a greater therapeutic index to begin with. Now, when it comes to step one, you're going to have a classic uh, presentation. This is going to be a classic overdose situation. A patient is going to have CNS depression, uh, and it's going to happen with normal vitals, but the mental status is going to be altered. They may have slurred speech. They may even have ataxia. Just the vitals are going to be normal. Because uh, this has a, a larger safety margin, you're rarely going to see respiratory distress. In barbs, okay, we're just going to write this out. In barbs, oh, that's a barbiturates and barbiturates. Uh, it's going to have a positive respiratory distress, okay? But in benzos, you have a negative uh, or rare, rarely presenting case of respiratory distress. Now, when it comes to overdose, benzos can be treated. There is an antidote, and that treatment is going to be flumazenil. Flumazenil is a benzodiazepine receptor antagonist, and it's rarely used because it can cause seizures in real life. But when it comes to USMLE Step 1, you will uh, have questions while you're studying where a patient presents with benzo uh, toxicity. They may have altered mental status, slurred speech. They won't have respiratory distress, but they'll say uh, that they were suffering from alcohol withdrawal or they're chronic alcoholic and they overdose on their medications. And because of that, uh, what do you give to treat this patient's overdose? You give flumazenil as far as step one. Real life, you don't really give it because it can cause seizures. Now, when it comes to benzodiazepines, obviously, when you are restricting or when you're cutting someone's intake of benzos, they're going to go through benzo withdrawals. And this can occur with abrupt cessation in chronic use when it comes to uh, benzo addicts. The classic symptoms are going to be tremors, like I put right here with this gif of Stewie. Patients will also present with anxiety. Think about it. Benzos are often used to treat anxiety, so if you take it away, and their anxiety might come back. Dysphoria might occur along with hypersensitivity to, to touch, psychosis, as well as seizures, which is a very dangerous equality. And that's exactly why you want to be careful when you are giving flumazenil also. And the treatment for benzo withdrawals is benzodiazepines, right? You want to give more benzos in order to prevent the withdrawals, but you also want to taper them off slowly. And that's pretty much all you need to know for the USMLE Step 1. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this helped out when it comes to benzos and barbiturate substance abuse. If you guys have uh, any time, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. And if you guys don't know, our lectures can be found on your favorite podcast service for free. Just search Mad Medicine and they'll pop up. Thank you so much and go ahead and continue on to the next topic.